If you grew up playing video games in the 1990s or early 2000s, you likely heard the large quantity of jungle drum and bass music present in video game soundtracks of this era. These tracks all sound similar enough to have come from the same album, yet the games themselves couldn't be more different. It didn't matter what the game genre was, platformer, sports, beat-em-ups, air combat, even puzzles. Composers of that era always found creative ways to incorporate these fast breakbeats and heavy bass lines into their video games. Recently, we've witnessed a resurgence of this once prominent music genre, with some playlists on YouTube garnering millions of views. Which brought me to the question, how did so many video games of this era end up using the same style of music? Let's look into it. Prior to the 1980s, electronic music production was prohibitively difficult for the budding musician to get into. Not only was the cost astronomical, but the physical size of the equipment required large studios to house it all. This began to change in 1982, when the Commodore 64 was released. What made it special was its sound interface device chip, one of the first sound chips of its kind to be included in a home computer. It was effectively a home system capable of allowing users to program their own chiptune-like songs, Rob Hubbard was among the most notable early artists to adopt the Commodore 64, rising to fame in 1985 for his soundtrack on the C64 video game Monty on the Run. However, the next big hardware leap came in 1985 with the release of Commodore's Amiga. We all know that the Amiga was ultimately a commercial failure, but it was a massive hit in the burgeoning electronic music scene. So much so, that the Amiga, used primarily to play video games, began popping up in nightclubs around the world. It was the first home system capable of allowing producers to easily manipulate beats and chop samples, making it an all-in-one home studio. One of the most famous samples that producers of this era would chop is the Amen Break, a drum break that comes from the 1969 track Amen Brother by the Winstons. If you chop it up, move the drum hits around, and speed it up a bit, you've got yourself the rhythmic engine of jungle drum and bass music. and hence a new genre of club music was born. In 1990, the legendary club Yellow opened in Tokyo. They were well known for getting some of the best DJs from the Detroit and Chicago club scenes, including Derek May and Kevin Saunderson. There were a number of Japanese video game composers that were influenced by these club DJs, including two in particular, Yuzo Koshiro and Motohiro Kawashima. Their club music influences are on full display in their 1991 Streets of Rage soundtrack. In fact, Yuzo and Motohiro have played live shows at clubs performing this exact soundtrack. Now, this isn't quite the jungle music we're after though. Up to this point, there was no way to get actual CD quality audio onto video games. Consoles were still relying on sound chips to generate all of their sounds. But the 1994 launch of the PlayStation 1 changed this. 
we finally had a console capable of generating CD quality audio from loaded samples. All of that Amen brake chopping could now be ported onto the console. And so the jungle movement began. One of the early artists on the jungle drum and bass scene was Suichi Tirada, best known as the composer for the 1999 PlayStation hit, Ape Escape. Tirada was already an accomplished artist in the Japanese house scene, founding his own label, Far East Recording, and releasing his first album by that same name in 1992. In 1996, he released his album, Sumo Jungle, which sounds like it came straight out of the video games of the era. The director for Ape Escape listened to Sumo Jungle and loved it so much, he asked Tirada to compose the music for his game. It has been said that Tirada attended a number of jungle, drum and bass, and house music shows to gain inspiration for the sound he wanted to create for Ape Escape. Another artist famous for her contributions to this era of jungle music is June Chikuma. Chikuma's score for the 1998 Nintendo 64 title, Bomberman Hero, is considered by fans to be among the best examples of video game jungle music with the song Redial being a fan favorite. If you were a fan of FPS arena shooters in the late 90s, you likely heard the music of Dutch composer Michiel van den Bos in 1999's Unreal Tournament. Like many other producers of this era, Van den Bosch came up with composing on the Commodore 64 and the Commodore Amiga, and was very clearly influenced by club music. Van den Bosch's song, Foregone Destruction, is featured on the Unreal Tournament map, Facing Worlds. If you were into club music and racing games, you likely played the 1999 PlayStation game Wipeout 3, with its soundtrack composed by Welsh composer Tim Wright. Wright was never into dance music, but after visiting clubs in Liverpool with the members of the game's development team, he had immediate inspiration for the type of sound he wanted to pursue. Wipeout 3 was noteworthy for having one of the first soundtracks to employ the use of licensed music. That is, asking outside artists to contribute music to the game. Most of the artists they reached out to turned them down, but they did sign music from the Chemical Brothers, Left Field, and Orbital. Wipeout 3 was a huge hit and quickly became intertwined with 90s club culture to the point that PlayStation consoles with copies of Wipeout 3 began appearing in nightclubs throughout the United Kingdom. The success of Wipeout 3 and its clear impact on club music culture meant that everyone wanted to get their music into games. For the music industry, video games became a new way for them to promote their songs and their albums. And this highlights my concluding point, that music and video games are two sides of the same coin and have been since the inception of video games. Zombie Nation's 1999 hit, Kerncraft 400, lifted its iconic synth line from the 1984 Commodore 64 video game, Lazy Jones. The 1994 SNES game Wolverine Adamantium Rage was blasting grind beats out before grind music emerged in the early 2000s. Michael Jackson wrote most of the original soundtrack to Sonic the Hedgehog 3.
early game composers like Kushiro and Kawashima found themselves inspired by club music of the early 1990s. These two composers would go on to inspire many other video game composers, whose works would in turn go on to further inspire club music artists. It was this virtuous cycle that ultimately created the jungle sound of the 1990s and cemented its presence in both video games and nightclubs. And that's all for today. If you've got a favorite jungle track that I didn't mention, let me know down in the comments section. Thanks for watching.